Alan here. Today, I want to go back to the uh, graph, the spark line, and kind of work on trying to style or make the uh, x axis look a lot more like what I want. So, just the hours and the coloring just right. Uh, that's basically what I want to do. It's going to be fairly quick and simple because of the way MP Android chart is set up. It should be very easy to do. So on the screen, what you'll see is I have each of the different segments, 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, et cetera, uh, shown. And each of those are supposed to represent the hours in the day. But showing it like this doesn't really convey that information to the user, particularly if I switched to the 12 hour clock where it was like 12 and then this would be four. Well, that wouldn't look quite right to the user. So what I want to do is format this uh, for uh, format the X axis, each of the values so that they look correct. And fortunately for us, MP Android chart has something for us. <laughs> Fortunately for us, MP Android chart has something. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right. What they have is what's called a value formatter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say time value formatter. It's going to extend the no <laughs> forgot class. value formatter there we go okay so the whole desire with this is it's going to format each uh all of the values along an axis so get formatted value is really what we're gonna is one one uh one of the functions that we can override let's see they specifically say do not use uh do not use okay deprecated deprecated ah here we are so like this is a good one to get the uh value the uh, how it's formatted so called when drawing any label used to change numbers into formatted strings and then this I, it looks like the axis label which is basically going to be nothing uh let's see and then bar for bar graphs uh, let's see a point for uh, the points on a line, a pie for the uh, label for the pie chart, then the radar stuff as well. So they, this is essentially where we would go and get all of our formatting. And as we noted up here, scrolling all the way up, get formatted value is what I we want to format. Uh, sorry, we want to override to be able to format the values on the bottom so that they look like the hours of a clock. So get formatted value. Now the value that's coming in is going to be the value on the X axis. Uh, again, like I said, that's the time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a date formatter to, uh, f well, format the time properly. <laughs> so companion object. Uh, private val time for mat whoops matter equals date time formatter dot paw of pattern and I'm gonna say hour because uh, capital H is the hour mark uh, for that uh, let's see colon mm for the minutes. All right, now if I did HH, that would be zero, one, but if I do H, that's one. It's a little easier to not put that zero in there if we can help it. All right, so that's the date time formatter. So I'm going to scroll down here. Then I want to get the local time of this value. So val local time equals local time dot of you can see I can do it of hour minute hour minute second hour minute nanoseconds or of the nanosecond of the day or the second of the day really it's just going to be the hour I'm going to pass in the value uh, it is a float so I got to convert it to an int and then I'm just going to do zero 
And then what we will do is date uh, time formatter dot format local time. And that should be returning a string. Yes. Okay, good. So I, <laughs> I'm doing this all right, I hope. <laughs> okay, now then what we do is we go up here to this x axis and we say value formatter equals time value formatter. And then let's open up this and go ahead and run it. Give it a second as it builds. I got a crash. All right, let's see why. So it looks like I have a crash because hour of day can only be zero to 23. So zero meaning the zero hour of the day to the 23rd hour of the day, I cannot do 24. So that does present a minor issue. And let's go ahead and take a look at what would happen if I said, all right, get uh, the axis Maximum is 23 instead of 24. Let's go ahead and let this run. All right, so 0, 4, 8, 12, 16 for 4 in the afternoon, 20 for 8 in the evening. And then I've got a blank over here. So it, it looks okay. Um, the only issue I think I have with it is the spacing, it looks a little uneven, but we can live with that for the time being and we'll be generally okay. So let's go ahead and change this to uh, Barlow semi-condensed. Yeah, that's my format. So what we're going to want to do is, let's see, X, uh, let's see, text. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Uh, let's see, what about font? We'll go up here, nope. I'm expecting it to be text, ah, here we are. Uh, typeface, that's what it is. So typeface equals that, and then we say, all right, context, compat.get typeface, or resources compat dot get font do, 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 do. we're going to go and do this and then we're going to pass in a context and we're going to say r dot font dot barlow semi condensed regular next is going to be text size Actually, I'm going to leave that alone for the moment. Let's see what happens when I set that. I'm going to do uh, text color. Hopefully, it just uses the default uh, text size. So context compat dot get color. Passing in the context r dot color dot black. Let's go 75. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this might look like. Yeah, looks pretty good. It's a little small-ish, kind of tiny. Um, so let's uh, let's play with the text size a little bit. Uh, so what we can do is go to my dimensions. I can say, all right, dimen name. Uh, let's see, X. Let's see, uh, spark line X axis size. There we go. Uh, I'm going to say 11 SP. All right. So little accessibility thing uh, from Android. They do not recommend that you go below 11 SP. Anything below that gets really tiny and hard to read. And there's actually a lint check in the uh, in XML that'll pop up and say, hey, you are going too tiny. Make sure you are uh, going for something a little bit bigger. So let's go ahead and set the text size. Context compat dot get c die. Mm -hmm. 
actually it's context.get die or resources. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't think resources compat has the get dimension. Yeah, no, because it doesn't need it. This is going to has been the same all around. So r dot, uh, let's see, dimin dot. There we go. Let's go ahead and run this. Give it a second. For some reason, it just takes a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's way too big. See how everything gets cut off and pushed off the screen and scrunched up. And I think that would also take a quite a bit away so what I'm going to do is I'm going to at least have it so we're going to drop it down to five and we're going to see that one and make a judgment yeah it's still getting cut off so what if I go really small and do three sp that looks like the normal size. What about 4SP? See, sometimes you just have to play around with this stuff. Yeah, 4 gets cut off. So I'm going to let it determine the size itself. I'm not going to set the size and let it go. Do, 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 do. All right, cool. Yeah, just let it run with its uh, the size. Users will generally, I, I'm hoping, will assume the location and everything. And we'll also work on getting a, uh, when, you know, when the user taps on it, they can get a, the specific information about that location. And that'll give the time in a little bit more, um, uh, more clear way. So anyway. There we go. That's all we're doing. That's all I've got for you. Uh, I just wanted to get this set up and nice and styled properly. So that's it. Uh, next step, I'm going to uh, probably work on getting the, each of these uh, points uh, to be uh, tappable. Uh, so a user can tap on one of these and then say, oh, okay, cool. That's what the information is at that point. And that's going to be mostly it with the graph for the time being because the next step is going to be getting that bottom portion here showing all the data for that day and then having a nice little fab down here so that the user can actually input information and then we'll move into the settings and notifications and that'll be it uh, for the time being so there we go all right i uh, hope you enjoyed this hope this uh was a little enlightening <laughs> Um, other than, so if you enjoyed this, if you liked it, if you want to continue watching this, uh, please hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell to know the next time that I'm going to go and post one of these videos and you can continue to follow along as I build out this app. If you think that this video will help someone, definitely hit that like button. It really spreads this uh, throughout uh, YouTube and uh, gets uh, it in front of more people's eyes. Uh, or you can just share it with a friend and have them subscribe as well. I mean, that's very helpful. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video.